active management is always relative to a benchmark. An appropriate benchmark should be representative of the assets from which the investor will select, can be replicated at low cost, and the benchmark weights are verifiable ex ante and return data ex post. For this topic, it's important to distinguish between ex ante, that is, forward looking based on expectation, and ex post, that is, backward looking based on events that have already happened. It's not hard to remember. Post means after the fact, so ante must be forward looking. Act of return is the value added by active management simply calculated as the return of the active portfolio minus the return of the benchmark. It can be measured ex post or ex ante. The ex ante active return is the expected return of the active portfolio minus the expected return of the benchmark. For example, a hypothetical benchmark may only have five securities and these are the expected returns of each security. Let's say the benchmark is equal weighted. The expected return of the benchmark is 6.8%. Let's say an active manager decides to deviate from the weights of the benchmark in the following manner. Based on the expected returns of each security, the expected return of the active portfolio is 7.85%. The ex ante active return of the portfolio is therefore 1.05%. We can express the formula for active return in this form. Another way to calculate the active return is to sum the product of the deviation in weights and the expected return for each security. So, for this case, the manager made deviations in allocation for three of the securities. Multiply by their expected returns respectively, and we also get an active return of 1.05%. For this method, the formula for active return is expressed as the sum of active return contribution from each security. If you've noticed, the portfolio manager made two types of deviations from the benchmark portfolio, deviations in asset allocation and deviations in the allocation to securities within each asset class. Active return may be attributed to sum of asset allocation return and security selection return. Asset allocation return is calculated based on just deviation in asset class without any change in the weight of securities within each asset class. For our example, let's say the active manager only deviates from the original 60% bonds, 40% stocks to 50-50 for the portfolio, but keeps the security allocation equal weighted within each asset class as in the benchmark. Based on the expected returns of the individual securities, the expected return of bonds as an asset class for the benchmark is 4%, and 11% for stocks. These are calculated based on the benchmark allocation, which is equally weighted. Like how we calculate active return, we determine the deviations in asset allocation weights and calculate the change in portfolio return based on their expected returns. Sum them up, we get the asset allocation return, which in this case is 0.7%. We can write the formula for calculating asset allocation as the sum of the product of the change in asset weight allocation and the expected returns. The other part of total active return is known as security selection return, that is the return from deviation in security weights within asset classes. The sum of these two parts is the active return, which is the 1.05% we calculated earlier. Based on this relationship, the security selection return must be 0.35%. The security selection return can be calculated on its own. To do that, we need to determine the expected return of each asset class based on the within-class weight of each security. For bonds, the respective weights are 0 0.3, 0 0.3 and 0 0.4, so the expected return for bonds is 4.1%. For stocks, this works out to 11.6%. If we compare the portfolio returns with that of the benchmark, we have an excess return of 0.1% for stocks and 0.6% for bonds. Based on the portfolio weights, the active return from security selection is 0.35%, consistent with what we calculated earlier. 
The formula for calculating security selection return can be expressed as such. The formula for calculating active return based on the components is as such, which I won't suggest you memorize as it's too complicated. Rather, it's better to practice more and understand the concept. With that, now's your turn to practice. The KG Supreme Fund is benchmarked against the prominent world index, which invests across the world equity markets. The portfolio weights and their expected returns are given in the table below. Determine the asset allocation return, security selection return, and total active return of the fund. Pause the video now and work out your answer. And we're back. As mentioned earlier, try not to memorize the formulas. Instead, try to reason out how you calculate the respective returns. First, let's compute the active return for each asset class, which is simply the portfolio expected return minus the benchmark. Recall that the asset allocation return is solely based on deviations in asset class allocation, assuming that the security weights within each class are unchanged, which means we take the benchmark return. The asset allocation return for each asset class is as follows, and the total asset allocation return is 0.05%. And also recall that the security selection return is from active decisions within asset class, so they're measured by the difference in expected return for each class. We use the portfolio weights as this is what is to be implemented for the fund, and these are the security selection returns and we sum them for the entire portfolio, which is 0.32%. You can learn more about the difference in return by studying the Europe market. Asset allocation return is zero, as there is no deviation in the weight for Europe as an asset class. However, security selection return is positive, as there is active return. This return comes from active decisions within the asset class. The total active return is simply the sum of the two components, which gives us 0.37%. You're watching an excerpt from our comprehensive animation library. For more videos like these, head on down to prepnuggets.com. At Prep Nuggets, let us do the hard work for you.